And welcome back to Warrior Lunch Break. We're now joined by Scott Ballard, the head coach for the women's basketball team at Winona State University uh, as we get back to action uh, this weekend. Uh, coach Ballard, thank you for joining us here. Um, let's go back to uh, January 2nd, uh, the only game that you've been able to play this season against Minnesota Duluth. Kind of give us your thoughts on, on how that game went. Well, it didn't, it didn't go very well. Um, obviously, the, the, the score indicated that. Um, you know, we're, they're really good and they're solid uh, at both ends of the floor. And they have the player of the year uh, in our league from a year ago. That's still just a junior, um, Brooke Olson. And she's very impactful at both ends of the floor. And, uh, you know, if things break down, it's nice to know you got a player that you can just get the ball to her and she can make plays for herself or others. So that simplifies things from, you know, a, an offensive approach. But uh, defensively, they're really sound and fundamental. Um, and we're, we're doing a lot of new things at both ends of the floor, offensively and defensively. And we just need a lot more reps and the game experience to get better at those things. Uh, that's a, a big challenge and a challenging thing to, um, you know, uh, that's a challenging team to play right out of the gate uh, with all the newness that we have in terms of um, things that we've added or changed, revised since a year ago. But, uh, you know, the, the things that we struggled with offensively in the first half, uh, we were kind of stagnant offensively and made it easy for them to guard us. Um, we, uh, but we didn't get, we didn't get very many touches in the paint either with post up or drives. And, uh, you know, that that's, we, we became one very one dimensional, which is easy to defend. So that played right into their, their hands. Um, the second half we did, we made some adjustments at halftime and offensively we, we got, um, a lot more paint touches and a lot of better looks um, at different spots on the floor, but, but we shot the ball very poorly. I mean, uh, we shot 25% for the game. I told our team after the game was over, I said, in all the years I've been doing this, I do not recall ever winning a game where we shot less than 25%. And, uh, and when you do it against a team as player of the year on it, it doesn't bode well. Um, defensively, we had a lot of mistakes where we gave up middle drives, um, transition defense, uh, breakdowns, um, and we just, we got behind 15 at halftime and dug a hole against a team that, that's really good. Um, and uh, that's just, that's just asking too much early season to overcome, especially if you're not getting stops defensively and uh, you're, you're not shooting the ball very well. So, uh, so we, we learned a lot from that game and we have yet to, to get an opportunity to play, to show how much we've improved or what kind of adjustments we've made from that learning experience. Uh, there were some good things to see from that game in terms of we, we only had seven turnovers, mm -hmm. which that's, you take that any day uh, especially first game of the year uh, against that kind of a team. Um, we were 11, 12 from the free throw line. We just didn't get there enough. Uh, I think we had 14, 15 offensive rebounds. That's a good sign, but, uh, we just had too many breakdowns defensively and offensively. We didn't execute well or shoot the ball well. So, um, you know, we didn't play up to the the level that we want to and we're capable of. But uh, going into it, I knew what I hoped for, but I had no idea what to expect. And uh, probably another good plus is that because the game got out of hand um, in, in the first half, we were able to uh, get all 15 people um, time on the floor. So every experience is not a good, is not a feel good experience, but there can be a lot of uh, lessons to be learned 
um, from it. And uh, we look forward to opportunity to improve to ourselves as much as anybody, uh, how much better we, we can execute and, and eliminate a lot of the mistakes that we have. I want to expand on your last point there where you talked about uh, getting uh, all your players uh, that were in uniform out on the floor. Uh, Maddie Shimmons at 16 minutes, she was able to score five points, uh, two rebounds, two steals, and an assist. And then Vanessa Alexander and Caitlin Shrimp both saw five minutes plus on the floor each. Uh, how much is that going to help them, not only this season, but then going forward, getting that kind of experience this early in the season? Well, it for for freshmen, first time touching the college basketball floor, and um, you know uh, Taylor Fouch was was another one. She's a redshirt freshman, so those four individuals um, got their feet wet, got a little bit of uh, playing time experience, even though. Uh, with the exception of Maddie, uh, the other three, you know, the game was basically uh, decided. Uh, but it just accelerates their development and gives them an opportunity to uh, gain some confidence and get comfortable for the next time. Um, I know uh, Maddie, Maddie, honestly, Maddie probably, uh, of our three point guards, Maddie probably had the best game and played the best, uh, which is impressive and surprising for a, a true freshman but uh maddie maddie doesn't overthink things she just plays and a lot of times that's that's the best approach uh i thought uh, i thought vanessa and caitlin shrimp both uh got involved immediately uh on the boards and uh defensively did fine um so that, that was encouraging uh, for them as well. All right, uh, this week is uh, Sioux Falls, and I imagine Sioux Falls is, is kind of difficult to, to look at because they have so many new players, and those new players did so much in their first two games of the season. It's gotta be hard to, to kind of plan for that. Well, I mean, we all have a small sample size of information to use to try to prepare it's still I, I always say early season you you have to focus more on yourself and to try to put the best version of yourself out there um you know i mean they, they've had a couple games postponed mm -hmm. um we've had three postponed of our first four uh it's hard to feel like you're gaining any momentum um and confidence uh, because, you know, I mean, we were shut down for practice for 10 days. Uh, and now we've had four practices this week leading into uh, this weekend games. But uh, it's, uh, it's something that none of us have experienced before. And there's no, there's no book you can read that tells you, you know, what to do in case of this or in case of that, there's still so much uncertainty i mean we really we you know we're, we're preparing like we're going to play but we still have both teams still have tests uh, you know pcr tests and antigen tests they have to take three times between now and and game day that you know determines whether or not it actually takes place and mm -hmm. so it, it is just really challenging from a mental uh, perspective uh, for your players to really be focused and I, to me that is the biggest challenge uh, the other piece of that would be to f to feel confident that you physically are ready to compete because those 10 days that we were shut down for practice we also could not lift mm -hmm. and lifting is is like a lot of things that if you don't use it, you begin to lose it. And 10 days is enough time to lose a, a lot of strength that takes more time than that to build up. But, uh, um, you know, reaction time is important in, in, in reps you get in practice to, to prepare for uh, competition. Um, it, it's, there's a whole lot more to it than just 
having an idea how they defend ball screens or what plays they run. Uh, there, there's a lot more physical and mental uh, preparedness that, that goes into competing. I want to ask you, how do you help your players with that? Because it's a good point that you brought up. We've talked about this in the past that, I mean, especially around you know finals time, players have school to worry about, they have practices and games to worry about, they have their own personal lives to worry about. And now you add on the stress of, of COVID testing, uh, some yeah. other thing that they have to worry about. So how do you help your players kind of manage through that, that kind of mental stress? I mean, talking about a lot of things, uh, a lot of open conversations about how to keep certain things in perspective. Uh, this has been a challenging week for us because we were coming off of a 10 day layoff of practice. Um, and then you have, then you have uh, classes that resumed uh, beginning on Monday. Um, and then we, we've had to practice early uh, Monday and Wednesday mornings, which is not normal. We, so there's a lot of things being thrown at them that can cause them to be fragmented with their focus and attention to detail um, and, and execution. Uh, the main thing is, honestly, this this whole situation is probably not going to feel good and and we don't know we don't know how it's going to turn out there's just so much uncertainty you really can you have to take it literally one day and one week at a time mm -hmm. and um, and hope for the best sometimes you prepare for the worst and hope for the best um, you just you just gotta you gotta push through and try to stay positive and try to stay motivated and be tougher than the circumstances. We only have a couple minutes left in this segment, but I kind of wanted to ask you. This might be an, uh, a little bit of a hard question to answer. We were talking before about being able to just prepare for one team uh, this year because you play them back to back days. You didn't get a chance to do that against Minnesota Duluth, but how ready did you feel? for that Sunday, um, you know, preparing or coming off of, of a loss and getting ready to play that team again. And, and how ready will you feel this weekend on, on Saturday if you get a chance to, to face that second team again? Well, I think if you look across the league, there's not been very many times where somebody won both games, whether they were at home or on the road. Um, you know, motivation, revenge, um, familiarity, uh, adjustments that the losing team makes after game one um, usually factors into game two and that, that's something that's really unique and different than what we're used to but it's the same for everyone um, so you know we, we've not got to live that yet so I'm I'm basically talking from a personal standpoint, if I was playing the same team two days in a row, I would do some things different. And uh, especially if I lost the first contest, mm -hmm. but um, you know, sometimes the edge swings to the, the losing team on game number two from a mindset and determination standpoint as a competitor. But, uh, you know, we, we look forward to getting to experience that. All right. Sounds good. Uh, I appreciate the time for this week, and uh, good luck on your games this weekend, Coach Ballard. Appreciate it. We hope uh, all of our viewers and listeners um, stay healthy and safe, and uh, we sure look forward to some normalcy um, this next year. That would be nice. <laughs> All right, thank you for joining us, and uh, thank everybody for watching. This has been Warrior Lunch.